Okay, to the question of how did I support the engine from below, you can see that screw jack is holding up the um, oil pan or the sump, and then these two white pipes there, which are PVC, you'll see now, uh, are standing right where the motor mounts go. So, you know, the whole subframe is off, and I could support the engine with this. Uh, and then put these exactly under place. Now, this is being filmed in April, this job I'm doing in March and April 2020, which means it's during the coronavirus lockdown. And this is all I had at home. I thought I had some six foot um, black steel, black iron pipe that I would have preferred to use, but I, had, but I couldn't find it here in my barn. Uh, I don't think I do have it. So I, uh, but I did have some of this two inch PVC, which is more than strong enough under compression like this to hold up the weight of the engine, or half the weight of the engine. And here you go, uh, just backing down in this screw, uh, you'll see that the engine is happily held up uh, by those other two posts. And this is what I did on here. Uh, I you know, made this a big uh, two by 10 piece of lumber plus a couple pieces of scrap wood to fill in the low spots uh, here on the bottom of the sump, so I could have exactly, uh, you know, the pressure distributed evenly uh, around on the sump. You can see there are some flats here, here, right, and clearly to me, uh, the sump was designed so the engine could stand up on a table by itself without falling over, so it's a nice stable base. I wasn't worried about the weight. And when I'm, uh, when I'm working on this here, I pull the, the, uh, the jack back and sit it, I take this off, and I've set the bell housing a little bit right there on the jack to give it a three points of lift. And then I was able to uh, easily remove the bolts of the sump and drop it down. But unfortunately, I don't think you can see this, uh, there, the sump, you can see it's very close or the bell housing is very close to the uh, headers or downpipes uh, to the point where it can only drop about that much uh, without before you take the headers off. So you don't get a lot of room. Now I was still able to drop it enough, pull out the old gasket, put in the new gasket, uh, squeeze it into its little channel all the way around uh, and uh, you know clean it all up. But it was, it was tight doing that um, and tricky. It's a lot easier to say, but the back side of it was tricky. Because the unfortunately, the sump, once you've unbolted it, won't slide forward because there's other stuff inside of there that are hitting uh, frame members and whatnot from above. So that was really a bummer. I thought I'd be able to slide this all forward. Let me move this light. Slide it all forward a few inches and drop it down. I disconnected this. Uh, to give me more room, but it just wouldn't slide forward because so I thought as this as the header pipe spread open and you tilt the thing a little bit Maybe it would drop out. There's no way I could figure out how to do it I also spent some time trying to take this this side uh, Header or down pipes off same on the other and just couldn't get it done here in the car now with a lot more effort Maybe the problem is the um, heat shields which make a lot of sense uh, especially the upper one, I loosened up, took all the screws up, but couldn't remove it from the car while the engine's in there. Um, unless, you know, who knows how much disassembly I would have had to do. Uh, but I couldn't get it off, uh, and therefore I really couldn't very easily get to all the header bolts. If I could have, I would have, and drop these down, but it wasn't going to happen. So luckily I was able to do the seal replacement um, right in place. Okay. That's all for now.